Hi and welcome back to this tutorial on the full workflow using the Omni and Autopano Video and Autopano Giga. So in the previous tutorial we sort of saw the best case scenario where everything works just fine using the automatic stitcher and automatic features of Autopano Video Pro. But obviously in some cases this is not enough. So there are many different ways to sort out problems. And in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through some of the steps you can take to make a stitch better. Uh, the first one is called adaptive stitching. We are also going to talk about template stitching and masks. So let's get right to it. So now I have opened some footage that was not shot during the downhill mountain biking shot in Le Setlo, but was shot previously because this is a great example of a situation where you would need to use template stitching. Um, we start here in the Chateau Frontenac in Quebec City and we have some buildings around us and this is something that we might call a medium parallax situation. The buildings are around us, we are surrounded, but they are not too close as well. And then we are going through the tunnel here and you're gonna go and you're going to see that we are yeah, in a more close space, which means that we have a very different parallax situation. Things are closer to the rig, so we need to use some different stitching. And then at the end of that tunnel, we go out and suddenly there's a lot of space, a lot of sky, so the parallax situation is again different. And you can see here, um, I've used this uh, full range and I've uh, stitched uh, using the current selection, which means that it took images at different moments of my selected area and it used the information in those images to create the control points, which means that we have one single stitch for the whole video. And then I've calculated the RMS curve. And the RMS curve here, you can sort of see where the different moments in the video are. At the beginning here we have a very flat curve and this is the first part of the video when we are in the medium parallax situation. And as soon as we start getting into the tunnel you see that the RMS curve starts growing because suddenly the stitch is not as good as it could. And once we get out of the tunnel the curve goes back down again, but we have some movement. You can see here I've also calculated the stabilization and you can see that we have some movements and that kind of explains why the RMS curve is slightly different there. So the way to deal with a scenario like this one is actually to use the cutter tool and to start creating different states that will be representative of the different moments in your video. So I'm going to create a first state here that will be for the outside, the first part, and then another state that is going to be the tunnel. And then we're going to have our state here that's going to be outside. And now I can right click and click select this range for each of my states. So I'm going to start with state 2, click on select this range and I'm going to again do a stitching as a GoPro Heroes 3 Plus and 4 using current selection and I'm going to click on stitch right here. And so now it's going to stitch using only the information in the state 2 and the stitch is going to be applied only in that part. We'll fast forward this a little bit. So now, if I select again, I press F and select again the all area and compute the RMS curve, you should see that in the state here, the RMS curve should go down significantly. And we're going to have a much flatter RMS curve throughout the video. And there you go, you can see that the RMS value of everything has been, has been 
much slower and we have now a much better result than we had initially. Uh, the last step here would be to sort of widen a little bit the transitions so that going from one type of stitching to the next is smoother and, and much more blended into the video, not just a single frame jump. I can also uh, really briefly here talk a little bit about horizon correction. As you can see, we have some movements here. We have done stabilization, but we have uh, partial stabilization. We are all happy with that. Uh, but um, I do want to make sure that the movements um, stay consistent uh, and that the horizon stays straight. And the process to do that would be to take the cutter tool here and create a transition for the part where I want to correct the horizon. So let's say I'm only going to export that area here. I will go here in my first state and I will straighten the horizon. Maybe for a case like this, I would go and open a Topano Giga and use the vertical line tool. Now the next step would be to go at the end of my video and correct again the horizon. And the orientation, I want myself to be in the back. Click on apply. And now I would go right in the middle here. And you see that the horizon is not exactly where I would like it to be and how I would like it to be. So I'm just going to correct it here. Rotate my sphere so that I'm in the back again. And click on apply. And you're going to see that here it created a new state automatically. So this was, used to be state 2, now it's state 3. And here it created another state. It cut the transition automatically. If this doesn't happen for some reason, you can go into the preferences and make sure that in edition you have auto cut transition before editing uh, ticked off. So next stage would be to then go to another part of the video right in the middle, um, correct the horizon here again, Don't apply, and again a new cut was created. Here state 3 became state 4, and you sort of go do that as often as needed. Um, to have the horizon the way you want it to be. So there you go, that's adaptive stitching and a little bit of horizon stabilization for you. Now let's look at an example using template stitching uh, and user presets for the template stitching. So here I have some footage that was shot using the Abyss rig um, and as you can see it has a few problems here and that's because the under underwater footage is pretty hard to stitch because of diffraction, you have less overlapping and because you are usually in a, a swimming pool or in the sea you, you will have a lot more images that are very similar and that can confuse the software. So the process to create your template would be to find a moment in the day where you had the rig in the exact same configuration. So I'm talking um, frame rate, resolution and camera position in the rig, uh, but in maybe outside of the swimming pool or outside of the sea. So you have a better and easier stitch to do. You would use that stitch, um, go into Autopilot Giga and save the stitch the dot panel file as you give it a name that you like. Um, let's say here we have something that I call template 1440 and in the newest version if you go into the preferences edition and click here you can see that you have a user presets and panoramas and here in panoramas you can put your dot panel files and Make sure that you have them organized with the proper names. And now here I have my template 1440 that I created using some footage shot on the same day as this swimming pool footage. 
Now you see that if I use the automatic stitcher, I get a bad result. Now, if I go into Stitch as template, so I can select here, or I can also say open another panel and it's gonna prompt me to point it to the right panel. But if I use template 1440, I stitch. Now, I'm not gonna get a perfect result because obviously the parallax situation is different, but you can see that or at least I have a proper sphere with images in the proper position. I have quite a few stitching errors here and there, but it's pretty easy for me now to go into Autopano Giga, find control points, find maybe masks to put, and just work on that footage that way and have a good basis to actually start working on the footage. So this can really make stitching together some footage really fast and especially in those unsynchronized rig where you cannot use the Omni importer, you can have the templates for your preferred configuration and then just use that template to create a first stitch that you can then render to have your rough stitches that you can work with maybe in Adobe Premiere. So this is the way template stitching works and now we are just going to talk a little bit about masks. So to give you an example about masks, we are going to use some footage that we shot during our downhill mountain biking shoot. So I have here a video where the guy is gonna come and do a backflip over the rig. Right here. And the problem here is that at some point is gonna cr is crossing between the two cameras and it's gonna it's gonna jump a little between the two images. Now I want to make sure that I have the best transition possible, so I'm gonna use masks for this one. So the first thing to do when you want to use mask and the first thing to know is to make sure that you are in uh, the sharp blending mode. So I'm just gonna go into blend, make sure that here I have sharp selected, click on apply. And then I'm gonna go into auto Pano giga. Before doing anything, before starting to cut my different states and starting to find the different moments where I want to have masks, I'm gonna first open Autopano Giga and I'm gonna put a few masking markers in each of my images so that I have them. If I need them at any moment, I know I can access them and I can use them. Because the thing with masks is that Autopano video is able to move them using transitions, so to have some slow movements but auto panel video is not able to create them without a hard cut so you would see the image jump when you are making some masks appear and this is not something that you want to have so you're going to put some masking markers here and there you're just going to have few of them in each of your image so that you can use them whenever you want you're going to click on apply here with the green tick save and go right back here. So now we have our masking markers. And I can see here that ideally at that point I want to use the image from the top camera. And probably a little bit uh, before it would be would be the transition between the two moments. I think that here my rider is going to be still in the field of view of camera number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a transition right here. So in state one, I'm still using the original positions because I can see, you can see that I don't need to move anything. The field of view of this camera is absolutely perfect. But in state two right here, I'm gonna click on edit. And now you see that the rider here is slightly cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and grab those markers that I put before and just move them 
on my rider. And now you can see that instead of instead of using instead of having the frontier between my two videos right here, the marker actually pushed that frontier down here. And so now the frontier is underneath the rider. So I'm going to click on apply, save, and I'm going to go back to AVP. And now I can expand a little bit that transition so that it's a smoother process. Now, if we play the video, we're going to see here the frontier is going, and that's it. So this is one of the cases where you would use masks to make sure that you don't cut the rider at some inappropriate moment. Um, you can have a much quicker transition, you can have a much longer transition, you can have multiple transitions between multiple states. Really the two important things to remember when using mask is sharp blending only and no creation of masking markers within the video. You really need to have all the masking markers that you are going to use created in your first state before you start using the cutter tool and start creating different states in the masking timeline. So now we have seen um, the basic stitching, we have seen a few different more advanced uh, stitching techniques and we still need to have a look at control points. So this is going to be the theme of the next tutorial and I'll see you then. Yeah.